Efforts to make the former president, Gilok Jonathan, appear as witness in the trial of the erstwhile PDP National Publicity Secretary, Olisa Metu, may have hit a brick wall as he's demanding the sum of one billion naira before he can appear in court. Justice Okunabang had issued a subpoena for the former president and former National Security Advisor Colonel Sambo Dasuki to appear as star witnesses in the money laundering suit against Mr. Metu, but both were absent. The court, however, softened its position on the subpoena issued against the former president on the grounds that he had not been served with the order as required by law. Our correspondent Amaka Okafo reports. The drama surrounding the trial of a former National Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party, Mr. Olisametu, is far from over as his trial continues. At the resumed hearing, both the immediate past National Security Advisor, Colonel Sambo Dasuki, and the former President, Goodluck Jonathan, did not turn up in court. Addressing the court on the issue, the prosecutor, Mr. Sylvester Tahir, told Justice Okonabang that the DSS informed him that the former National Security Advisor declined to appear before the court even when the EFCC complied with all the necessary requirements to get him to court. But counsel to Colonel Dasuki, Mr. Ahmed Raji, asked the court to discountenance the submission of the prosecutor. He also informed the court that Colonel Dasuki had filed an appeal challenging the decision of the court, which last week turned down his request to set aside the subpoena issued against him. The counsel who brought the information was quoting a third party who said he had the colonel. That is not admissible in law and that should not be allowed. Former President Goodluck Jonathan was not present in court. His counsel, Chief Mike Ozokome, urged the court to either completely set aside the service of the subpoena against the former president or, in the alternative, compel Mr. Metu to cater to the cost of his appearance. In the event that the court still believes that he should come and testify, it's part of our argument against, then the court should order Olisametu, who needs the president's services to deposit the sum of one billion naira only to cover the cost of his traveling expenses, logistics, and security personnel that will have to accompany him during the pendency of the suit. In his bench ruling, Justice Abang asked the DSS boss to produce Colonel Dasuki while Mr. Metu shall find a way to effect the service on the former president since he requested the subpoena. Amaka Bukafo, Channels Television News. Staying with legal issues, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Walter Nogang, has picked a retired Justice of the Supreme Court. Suleiman Galadima as the new chairman of the Corruption and Financial Crime Cases Trial Monitoring Committee. He is to replace Justice Ayo Salami, the retired president of the Court of Appeal, who rejected the offer to serve as chairman of the committee. Mr. Galadima was appointed a judge to the Court of Appeal on December 1998 and later promoted to the Supreme Court judge in 2010. He retired on October 10, 2016, at the mandatory retirement age of 70. We're going to switch gears now to go to Abuja, where Ibrahim Adra is standing by with more on the News at 10. Hi, Ibrahim. Hello, Marachi. Good to see you. Let's begin from the National Assembly, where the Senate is asking the federal government to prioritize the funding and completion of the permanent site of the National Library of Nigeria to mitigate losses accruable to the project. The motion on the National Library project is sequel to a special report by Channels Television recently which detailed the pitfalls of the project and the deplorable conditions of the building housing the library. Correspondent Linda Kiwi reports. On October 26th this year, Channels Television did an expose detailing the rot, detailing the rot and unsanitary conditions in Nigeria's National Library. There were also questions on why the permanent site of a National Library project has not been completed 11 years after the contract was awarded and billions of Naira released. So far, no government official has reacted or answered these questions. In 2014, 2.2 billion was budgeted and only 555 million was released. A federal lawmaker raises this issue at plenary. 
He maintains that the failure of the federal government to properly fund the National Library project is a huge disservice to the nation. Further disturbed that the failure of prioritization of this project by successive governments is a direct reflection and metaphor for the almost inexistent premium we place on knowledge and intellectual capacity as a country. The federal government awarded a contract for the construction of a National Library Building Project to Reynolds Construction Company in 2006 at a sum of 8.590 billion naira with a project timeline of 22 months. The contract amount has been revised upward repeatedly with a final cost of 78.37 billion naira. Nearly 7.5 billion naira has been released for the National Library Project from 2008 till 2015. Worried that the continuous failure to properly fund the project within the specified period will cause the government losses modestly estimated to be in the range of 40 to 50 billion naira and that if this failure to fund the project expeditiously continues, it might cost the government even more on the long run. So the best thing is for us is for the committee to look into it closely as to how the little amount of money that has been so far released have been best utilized for the project. The Senate has asked this committee on education to meet with the ministers of education and FCT to adopt an appropriation strategy to ensure the completion of the project starting from the 2018 appropriation bill. In the meantime, the building housed in the National Library is in shambles, stacked with rotten documents and library staff exposed to conditions which have brought about respiratory diseases. Linda Akibi, Channels Television News. And meanwhile, the Joint Committee of the Senate and House of Representatives on Aviation are pledging their support for the speedy completion of the new international terminal building of the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport in Abuja. Speaking in Abuja shortly after inspecting the level of work at the new international terminal building and other facilities at the airport, the chairman of the Senate Committee on Aviation, Senator Adam Aliro, announced the completion date of February 2018. He assures officials of the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria that the legislature will provide legislative backing for infrastructural development of the airport, which is the only one in the nation's capital. Away from the National Assembly, scores of workers in the informal sector of the economy took to the street of Lagos to protest against what they call harassment, extortion and unlawful eviction from places of business. The protesters under the umbrella of the Federation of Informal Workers Organization of Nigeria, FIWA, walked from Ikeja bus stop to Lagos State House of Assembly today. In the wake of the demolition of structures at Otodubame, Alade Market, Mechanic Villages and other places. Members of the Federation of Informal Workers Organization of Nigeria, FIWON, consisting of traders, artisans and the civil society, take to the streets in protest. From Ikeja bus stop to the State House of Assembly, where they are met with a barricade. We are out today on the occasion of United Nations World Cities Day to make a statement. Every day, thousands of traders and street vendors are picked up. They pick them, they dump them in prison. If they can't pay their FT bribes. Officials from the state government address the issue of a mechanic village. The issue of animation, I want to say that uh, uh, the state government has less uh, activities there. The land actually belongs to a family. The land doesn't belong to the government. I'm always in a, to a very, very good touch with the mechanic in that place. The state legislators are not available for comments and the advisor to the governor on transportation promises to pass a letter from the group on to the governor to address the other concerns of housing and markets. But the need for intervention seems to be immediate. Talking about uh, Badia is at Ijora. Badia is up to the, 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 the community was demolished uh, in 2003 by the former governor uh, Tunumbu. 
2013 was demolished by Fashola. 2015 was demolished by Hambode. As I'm talking to you now, I'm sleeping in my friend's house. Fiwon is accusing the government of violating the goal of the 2017 UN World Cities Day with the theme, Innovative Governance Open Cities. But the Lagos state government insists that all matters of unlawful eviction are being investigated. Mary Alale Yusuf, Channels Television News. There is yet another protest, this time around by indigents of Benue State who are resident in Abuja. They are protesting against the Splinter Group of Cattle Breeders Association who are against the state's anti-open grazing law that is expected to come into effect on November the 1st this year. The protesters describe the anti-grazing law which the state government signed into law earlier this year as the only solution to the incessant clashes between cattle breeders and farmers in the state. The group is calling for the arrest of the leadership of the splinter group of the Mieti Allah cattle breeders, who they claim have threatened to resist the full implementation of the law. Achieving livable and sustainable cities around the world will require policies and actionable plans for development by government and other enterprises. That's according to the Secretary General of the Global Forum on Human Settlements, Lu Haifeng, at an award ceremony in the United States. Our correspondent, Emmanuel Rey, who is in New York City, reports that 23 awardees, including the Governor of River State, Nye Sumwike, were honored for their contributions towards achieving the new urban agenda. How do you close the gap between a developed society and a developing one? Perhaps the provision of efficient infrastructure for a vast majority of the people will top the agenda. For the Global Forum for Human Settlements and the United Nations Habitat, provision of basic living conditions for a vast majority of the people who do not have access to city life is a good way to start. It's a ceremony that has run for the past years. As guests arrive at the lobby of the UN Plaza in New York, United States, including the governor of River State, Yesom Wiki. The ambience sets the tone for the 12th Human Settlements and Sustainable City Ceremony, organized by the China-based Global Forum for Human Settlements. This year, we have been feeling strongly the influence and damage to human beings from increasing extreme weather and the disastrous climate changes around the world. By 2050, it will be 90 percent of people living in cities. So this is really an opportunity to do things in a different manner, and it's an opportunity also, and it's a challenge, uh, what the role of cities will be on sustainable development. Nigeria, USA, and of course, China. The River State governor turns out to be the only African on the list for his efforts towards urbanization. He believes it's the result okay. of teamwork. Definitely always say that we have not done anything but the global forum on human settlements and sustainable cities disagree with them that said that look how far they are concerned we've done something thanks of our man you know so we're very happy I will give to God the glory. The event was put together in collaboration with the permanent mission of the Gambia to the UN, the permanent observer mission of the African Union to the UN the United Nations Environment Program and other development partners. From New York, Emmanuel Irene, Channels Television News.